Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? It is another fantastic Friday, and hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Humana Story Lives, Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 43. I am joined by the fungus among us, and if you'd like to join the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story Live thread and give us your best shot. If they're good, I'll read them on the air, and if they're bad, the fungus among us will read them on the air. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story community members from around the world. Who knows who will be next? We do. We have Mr. Sergeant and Mr. Richards. Richards. Richards? Is it Stevens? Richards? I can never remember his damn name. It's, he has two first names. What do you want from me? <laughs> hey, you gotta think Reed Richards from Fantastic Four. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. God damn, he doesn't even know his own people's name. You know what? You know what? That's all right. We'll get it down. The more the more you talk, the better it is. So remember, if you can't so if you can't find it, you're probably using Burt's Bees beeswax lip balm cap in a spaceship from Mr. Sergeant somewhere off grid. But more importantly, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap. So eat more buttery biscuits. Callers can call in at 1-619-798-6307 if you're in the San Diego area. And if you don't care about long-distance chargers, you can also Skype us at Humana Story, H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y, for a worldwide connection. Messages will be heard and aired during the show. So be sure to let us know that you're referencing Coffee with Humana Story, number 43. If you're having trouble using phones and Skype, you can always Twitter us at Humana Story. You can submit your stories by simply going to humanastory.com and clicking the submit button. It's as simple as that. Reading with Humana Story airs 12.30 p.m. Saturdays. And the Coffee with Humana Story on Monday will reflect Reading with Humana Story for those of you that read. So, today is our fantastic Friday. Flat Friday number six. So the question of the day is should we present both the historic enclosed world map along with the current map taught in schools today? I don't have to ask Mr. Sergeant that question because I think he already has the answer to that question. So, Mr. Richards, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Yourself? Great. How how is the fungus among us? The fungus among us, I had to peel myself off the wall. Cause you know, I'm the mold on the wall. So uh, I had to peel myself from the wall to get over here to the show. That is some horrible imaging right there. It's fantastic. <laughs> Nothing more hor- horrifying than my lip balm. Do you really want to hurt me? Oh, God, don't do that. <laughs> Seriously, gonna do a thing. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so uh, there was a few questions that came in from yeah last week. Yeah, 
I figure we'll go ahead and get through those because I'm sure that you guys are all eager to answer my question of the day. Mm. And uh, so let's start with uh, Nelson Viscotti. It looks like he was doing a flat earth support. I don't necessarily think it was a question, but we'll give it a shot. If the earth is spinning, how could we see the same area of the sun all the time? The sun and the moon and all objects are fixed. Knowing this makes me realize how special we humans really are. The moon doesn't... Well, the moon rotates, but it rotates perfectly with us. So we only see one side of the moon. Now, the sun supposedly rotates, but that's a whole other... But you, but you can't stare at it. Uh, but, but yeah, it's like any good movie, or as recent as Neo, The Matrix, you know, that they wanted him to find out for himself. Yeah, they, they, they showed him a few things, but he still had to take the path. Uh, that's those are the best stories where you know you've got a higher wisdom that's trying to coach you along down the road, trying to get you to figure this stuff out. And unfortunately for us, the things were were hidden so well that it was right in front of our faces and we couldn't see it. Uh, I don't know if I remember telling you, but the back in 2000, literally when this was right in front of my face, literally right in front of my face, when. I was trying to find pictures of the Earth from space, full lit pictures of the Earth from space uh, for the monitors in my computer tech department, and I couldn't find them. There was literally only one image, and I couldn't, I, I was just, and I was just sitting there right there, and I could not see the forest for the trees. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand. It's like, why is there only one picture of the Earth from space? And I remember yelling at the screen. I was going, NASA, you suck. You're so bad at this internet thing. I mean, it, it was staggering to, for me to see. Uh, because, again, why why pilots don't see it, why surveyors don't see it, why nobody sees it, because we're not looking for it. Nobody was looking for it. That's why everybody fell for it. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't really looking for it either, and now that you got me thinking about all this crap, all I ever find myself doing is staring at the freaking moon. <laughs> freaking moon. Freaking. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I, it, <laughs> it, it, you look at everything differently, and it's it's really, really amazing. But, again, it's the it's the ultimate street street magic trick. Uh, where everyone thinks you know, that's the big buildup of any street magic. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I pulled up a quarter from your ear, or oh, I found this and that. And you're thinking, oh, and then he's got, okay, I've got one more trick for you, and you're, you're ready for it. It's like, it's like, okay, I got it. You're never going to fool me. And it turns out, you know, the, the card was in your back pocket the entire time. He, he had it there since day one. And uh, you, you were always no different than this. You were born into this. You, were, you never had a chance. People, that's why I think people are so get so angry and so worked up. It's like I can't be fooled. You can't fool me. It's like, dude, you're you were fooled before your grandparents were born. <laughs> you never had a chance. So don't get get over it. It's it's just what well, it's the ultimate it's the ultimate magic trick. So anyway, I have nothing to say for that except yes, awesome, great news. So proud of you and Patricia. It was from Carly Sunshine. Give her a little credit. Well, thank you, Carly Sunshine. That's great. Uh, <laughs> if, if she's if she's contra- if she's happy for Patricia and I for for getting the radio show, then, then that's she great. wasn't very specific. I'm guessing it was from last show. But it's going to be a. From what I understand, it's already developing. Even though it hasn't even had its first day yet, it's developing into kind of a flat Earth radio network. So it's going to be called, if I'm not mistaken, the Flat Earth Network, and then the show I'm going to be on is the flat earth show and then other people are going to have their shows but i know well you know i'll subscribe i want to be the first subscriber too because <laughs> you were the first one to buy my book <laughs> yeah i got this you know you really okay. you probably paid more for shipping than the book cost yeah i know i did uh, <laughs> yeah because i also shipped it to you <laughs> right but i also found uh, yeah i know then you shipped it to me to have me sign it via and i'm hopefully i'll get it today the uh, just so you know, because I thought I initially said that it came from London. The publishers were in London, but they have a uh, fulfillment house in South Carolina. So the book was oh, actually okay. printed. If it's in the states, like any place, you know, because you want to save money by using a local local uh, printer. So they printed it, that particular version in South Carolina. But if you were like in UK, I think they printed in UK and so on and so on. Order over chaos. Now, this guy's a skeptic, and he says apparently Mark Sargent isn't required to explain how he knows we oh. likely live in a Truman-like closing structure. That model has not been shown to reflect any reality anywhere oh, yes. other than the imagination. The proof. The proof. Where is the flat-earth proof? 
uh, I treat this, and I, I'm going to be working this into debates because it's probably going to be my, my best my best move. Well, and let me is, let me finish because he has more oh, okay. questions. Oh, really? So you just re, you just relax yourself, okay? Because here's the serious. Well, I stuff. can't do too many questions in a row. But go ahead. Uh, shouldn't we be given a reference point for what is real, natural, and genuine, so that we could know if it's something artificial? The uh, <laughs> okay, I treat it like a court case at this point, and that is, in a court case, the opening remarks are, uh, and I'll give you the, the short version, is that, no, you're absolutely right, you know, flat earth is conjecture, it's speculation, it is circumstantial evidence, you know, but of course, that that's silly to say, because if anyone actually had a picture of the flat earth, we wouldn't even be talking about this right now, the whole world would be in, in some sort of chaos, either good for good or for bad, but... What, if, as far as a court case goes, the flat earth doesn't necessarily have to prove anything because the burden of proof is on the globe side. And that's where we really score high marks because we create massive amounts, massive amounts of reasonable doubt in the globe model that shouldn't be there. The, the globe model, because we just, it's like, well, it's a given. Obviously, we, we know that it's a globe. Well, really? Because we can show you a whole bunch of stuff. I can't even let, list them off, even a fraction of them off in, in this program, of why the globe model is, is having problems standing up to scrutiny. So, and everything points to, yes, at that point, it's like, is it perfectly flat? Is it domed? Is it not domed? Is it, you know, whatever shape you want it to be? Uh, it, it to the flat earth movement it really doesn't matter because the one thing that everybody's on the same side when it comes to this everybody's got the same goal and that is well, we know for a fact that it's not a globe and it's, they're they're do, they're going way out of their way and by that i mean the authority to hide what they you know what they initially advertised the world to be you know okay so you know that our logo is yeah i know you got to change that uh, <laughs> yes, you know our logo is a is a is a globe, right? Well, I, uh, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know that I love Niels. He's a great scientist. Yada yada yada. My thing is this. Yeah. Why would somebody like that get out on stage and instead of actually having the foresight to understand that he needs? I mean, he's charismatic, so you think that he would automatically and I, i'm not trying to get into this whole let's let's be the inquirer i mean yeah. i i'm just stating the fact that if he had gone out on stage like a real scientist and said look here's why i believe instead he gets out there for showmanship throws a mic across on the floor and you know he acts like an idiot instead of being intellectual like he's supposed to be and i have a hard time with that because i followed the guy until he did that like he literally pushed people away by doing that and i don't understand what the logic behind that would be other than to try to make flat earth look stupid but it's obviously not stupid there's a lot of people that believe in it so what are your thoughts all right all right he's got he's the face of science he's uh, he's got a real opportunity though and that is if i was neil degrasse tyson i would have this big moment eventually have this big moment moment of conscience conscious where conscience jesus where he actually goes out and <laughs> says look we i've made a mistake you know we made a mistake we did it for your own good but it's time to you know to reveal the lie to reveal the deception and well no no i mean what i'm saying is i mean even if he believes that it is round i mean but still he goes out and he acts like a retard rather than being a scientist yeah, that's, like that's he's what, supposed to be what are you going to do if you've got 20 years of of schooling under your belt that's, well, that's what you're going to do. The books say that it's round. Every science book says that it's round. Therefore, if you're a scientist, you're going to preach it. And and you're going to ridicule anything that, that goes against it. All right, so I'm going to cut you off here. And uh, we will be back shortly, people. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. 
We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. episode 43 this is the second segment of fantastic friday now i wanted to get to our uh fantastic man of the day <laughs> you know I, I really need to get a good good word for that but uh, anyway hey caveman 444 he says hey mark next time you're on can you ask the host for me since mark has done five of these shows now and you seem to be very receptive to the concept. Could you entertain the idea of possibly changing everyone's story shapes this little blue rock we call home? To which I will reply to Mr. Caveman 444. But of course, we try to grow with every bit of knowledge we get. And Mr. Man 444, even flat, couldn't it be a flat rock? And couldn't it still be blue? And couldn't we still call it home? You can never blame an awesome fan like the ones you have. Which brings me to the Fantastic Friday contributor, Caveman444. I'm going to have Mark put a link in the description below. Contact us. And without further ado, Mr. Richards... You have a question for Mark. And no, he likes the Burt's Bees lip balm. Oh, That's what he likes it. to put Actually, on. I'm a chapstick guy. And he oh, doesn't but... listen he doesn't listen to the Boy George song. He listens to Crying Game. Nice. So it's a little different. It's a the little soundtrack, different. The soundtrack to Crying Game? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I only use lip gloss when I'm down at the bar. Anyway, yeah. what... Uh, what do you got? All right. Um, all right. So I don't know about you, but when uh, the first the topic got brought up on my lap about four years ago, um, I didn't react quite as hostile as all these other people. Like, why do you think they're acting like they're being sprayed with, like, holy water and they're demons or something? Like, they're they're going crazy when I mention the word flat earth. Oh, like, uh, just because of the conditioning. Uh, it, again, it's the only thing we debunk to children. It, it's th there is no other, and, and, and I'll, I'll take that one step further. And you probably heard me say it, which is I can talk about the Truman Show all day long. I can talk about uh, enclosed world, enclosed Earth. You take, take up your term, whatever it is. It is literally the words. So once you say flat Earth, people go freaking ballistic. The holy water scenario because it, it is we're conditioned to do it and at the same time it is the only conspiracy do me a huge favor back away from the mic a little bit guys I, I hear feedback from one yeah of somebody you. turned down their speaker <laughs> I gotta talk so, so can, okay that's better so uh, it, it, it's because it's also the only conspiracy they can't get away from so if you don't want to hear about 9-11 fine you don't ever have to think about 9-11 but when somebody says oh yeah by the way the world you live in isn't the world you live in what are you going to do to that? I mean, you've got to react one one way or the other, and it's that fight or flight instinct. People get really—I mean, you've seen the forums. Oh yeah, it's a nightmare. And uh, so I just say, I, I, my argument now is like, look, I'm not going to convince you. I don't want to convince you. All I have to do is put the term in your head, put the seat in your head, and like the jury deliberating. You know, it's, it's like all I have to do is plead my case. And you're going to have to go back and deliberate on your own. Uh, so just be prepared. It, 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 you're, you're not going to get away from it. I've tried every method I can think of. And uh, aside from, which is why the Alex Jones show still won't do a show on this, of trying to define, t tell somebody about flat earth without actually saying the words flat earth. And I know some people say, no, you just can't use the words. I was like, look, you got to, because you've got to get that emotion in them. You've got to get them to, to deal with it one way or the other. So, Right, right. Well, I was talking to someone the other day, and it was the first person that didn't give me negative feedback about it. They were like, oh, that'd be pretty cool, actually. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> pretty strange. Yeah, that's, kind of, that's one. That threw me off. 
Yeah, that's a rare, rare person. Uh, you, you've heard me say, look, if, you, if you're not laughing at this right away when you first hear it, there's something wrong with you. Because everybody fights this thing to begin with, including me. Everybody's, I, I think uh, Jake Gibson, uh, you know, Flat Earth Asshole, I thought his line was pretty good. And that is, he goes, I got into it because I tried to debunk it and I failed. That's that's really what that's a T-shirt right there. I tried to debunk Absolutely. flat Earth and I failed. Uh, that should be you know I tried to debunk what should be the front. I failed is in the back because it's, that's how everyone starts. Everybody tries to shoot this thing down because everyone thinks they're smart enough to do it, and it, which is why you know today what scientists find me even a even a pseudo scientist that is had, no one. Sh- it's been a full year now. No one shot this thing down. They're not going to. There's nothing to shoot it down with. We've looked at every single angle there is. And NASA can't even create something now if they wanted to. I can. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> we had a comet that landed in Russia and uh, in the no, forest it blew area. Up, it, didn't it, blew, even... it blew up over Russia. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it landed in the, uh, it blew up in the forest. Oh, to the Tunguska blast of 1908? one recently. And, uh, what do you, okay, hold on, hold on, Mark, hold on. What he's referring to, oh my God, Mark. No, sorry, no, just, tell, uh, <laughs> just I, I get it. Okay, so something recent blew up over in Russia. 2013. No, no, it was a huge meteorite in 2013. It hit just outside one of the okay. major cities. Well, yeah, but nobody died. Yeah, otherwise, I would have heard about it. Well, you should have heard yeah. about it. It was all uh, over the yeah. news. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think maybe someone up there directed that to that area? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's it's just a, it's just introducing meteorites, not necessarily comets, but meteorites. Uh, that's easy it is compared to everything else involved in this place. It's literally just introducing a piece of metal ore at speed. The the friction from the atmosphere does the rest. And again, try not to aim at populated areas if you can help it, because that defeats the whole purpose. But, you know, you got to wonder why we've never had a city getting got get hit by anything like that. Or a, or a yeah. super volcano go off, or you know an earthquake swallow a city. Yeah, we've had earthquakes and some hot waves <laughs> yeah. here and there, but we've never had a major city. I'm not going to count like Vesuvius or, or Krakatoa from back in the day. I'm talking. You know, well, now. yeah, you can't even get the San Francisco earthquake of like 1902 because those were when we were building buildings that were all made yeah. of stick. Yeah, or like the the Carrington event from the 1800s, which fried the telegraph lines. If that would have happened now, we would have been put back literally, you know, into the 1800s, if not burned ourselves up back into the Stone Age. So, anyway, sorry, Stephen, did you have something else? I know we're running uh, out of time. Yeah, I got one more question real quick. Sure. Um, uh, who's going to follow up on B.O.B.? Who's going to be the next celebrity to come out, do you think? Me. Uh, you know, I really me. would like somebody from... <laughs> no. Ryan from Freeman to start. Oh, and me too. <laughs> and art from Humana Story. No, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be somebody from I would imagine a um, someone that he knows, somebody from a, a, a talk show. I, I'm not saying it's gonna be Colbert or, or or Bill Barr or any of those guys, but it's got to be someone along those lines. I I you know who the person I'd like it to be? I'd like it to be Whoopi Goldberg because she, but because she brought it up years ago on the View, and women are receptive to this sort of stuff. You Is know, she women really. Are, yeah, she did. She brought it up years ago. And I don't know why she brought it. She brought it up to the panel on, on air and said, how do you know the earth isn't flat? And, you know, it's stunned. It's, the other people you know, were so stunned that she even brought it up, like, like a lot of people, that, that they didn't know how to respond. Uh, but, I, but she, you know, comes off as, as smart enough and stable enough. And, you know, as far as I know, she's never had any weird rantings where she's been considered a kook. So that's who I'd like to see it. But I don't know. Yeah, the third person. I don't know. I, you know, it's stranger to me. And again, I know we're out of time. Is why Bob after getting all that press after every magazine in the world picked up on this, why he never did a follow up interview. That again, that kind of screams purpose. Like why yeah. your phone's ringing off the hook, your agents calling you every five minutes, going, "Dude, Time Magazine, Esquire, you know, MTV, everybody wants to talk to you about this." Well, no, wait a second, wait a second. Isn't it possible that he he is running into the same problems most of us do? When I first approached you about it, I mean, yeah, everything between us was was great and civil, and I'd say, you know, now looking at a, quite a few months later, we're friends. But when we go on to your YouTube channel, you get a lot of uh, haters. 
uh, I don't know what the hell they call them. Um, Trolls. The people that write, yeah, well, whatever. The people, they're just, they write nasty, stupid crap. I mean, and they don't have any valid points. It's all washed away with, with their anger. But, I mean, now imagine his scale. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's, yeah. you were pointing out to me that he had a lot to lose. Well, you know, not, at, so not that much. His Grammy was in 2010. I mean, if anything, you know, with Hollywood, it's what have you done for me lately? So, or, you know, in, in the entertainment industry. So why didn't he, I mean, it's free marketing. I mean, there, there are advertisers, there's yeah. agents out there. You can't buy that sort of marketing that happened. He, all he did was say two words, tweet it, flat earth, and the whole world just erupts. I mean, the fact that he was in the Wall Street Journal, how does that happen? That was probably the first time he's ever been in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, so okay, I do have one question, and it's the question of the day. Do you All think right. we should present the historic flat world map along with the current world map taught today? Should they teach it? Yes. Will they teach it? No, uh, because yeah. they can't. Not not in the the current paradigm we're in, because the Mercator map is still being used, and we all know. And, and explain I, the Mercator map. The Mercator map is the pull down map that you see side to side the world, the flat, the big flat rectangular mm. map that's that's a in front of the chalkboard it's five the one they pull down all the time and exactly and it's it's the one we all know it's wrong all the scientists know it's wrong the perspectives are way off the the gall peters projection is by far more accurate but they aren't introducing it because it's it's a it's like comfort food they they don't want to rock the boat uh plus i don't think they want people inspecting the map even closer because at that point the gall peters map becomes a gateway to uh, the flat model. Science doesn't like question marks. They don't like debate. Again, Neil deGrasse Tyson's line, which was, science is right whether you believe in it or not. Uh, the mo- one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard in my life. Uh, he's, w- why, why would you say that? Because science has been wrong about so many things. But the, well, he, he can't... Science doesn't like debate. No different than even though they don't know what the core of the Earth looks like, they won't put out a diagram showing a big question mark in the center of a sphere... Because right. they don't like question marks. They're going to say, because people are going to keep asking. People are going to go to science and say, what's down there? What's down there? What's down there? So they just made a cross section and said, you know what? That's what's down there. And people are like, okay. Like, oh, see you later. <laughs> yeah. We don't. Well, <laughs> yep. People like these. Zero. That's it. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, hey, Fungus it? Among Us, do you have any yes. questions for Mr. Sergeant? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, you got a does... minute. Spit it out. Okay. Quick. Go, why go, does go. The moon have spots, have has spots on it and they never move they seem the same when you look at the moon they never move oh you mean why does the uh uh why do you mean the moon craters yeah the moon craters they, oh yeah because you look at the because... moon they look they look the same every time you, i've looked at the moon and i've been really checking it out no 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 that's okay vacuum it's, cleaner. it's a fair question because not a lot of people know this and that is the moon uh all, all your good astronomers know it but the moon rotates with the Earth. It, they're perfectly synced up to where we only see one side of the moon at all times. That's why, you know, the dark side of the moon joke is what's on the dark side of the moon, we don't know, even though NASA supposedly took a picture recently. <laughs> and so it, it lines up with, it's one of those curious You've things. got that picture on your cool trailer. I do, <laughs> I do. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's why. It's because it rotates with us perfectly. Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 